Hello, my name is David Wynn, and today I'm gonna to give you a brief demonstration of Edge Delta. For those that don't know, Edge Delta can be broken down into two big components. On the one hand, we have our core observability platform where we can display logs and metrics, collect them all in one place, and show them to you in an appropriate way to help you troubleshoot issues. On the other hand, we are also an observability pipeline where we can do a lot of processing on that data in real time in flight with a number of different advantages that come along with that. I'm gonna show you the basics of each of these two things in less than five minutes. So let's dive in. To start, we have the classic log search that those who have used observability tools before will recognize. There's keyword search for full text searching. There are facets for drilling down by different types of metadata. You can scope your search based on different timeframes, all of the classic things that you would expect from a core log search experience. However, we also do a little bit more than that as well. The next thing that we do is we will not only collect the data in its raw form, but we will also transform that data with a machine learning pattern on the agent itself into something that's a bit higher level. It looks a little bit like this. So you can see here, messages that have come in from this big pile of logs have been rolled up into much more condensed signatures. And we can see that we have parsed out things like IP addresses, timestamps, port numbers, things along those lines, and rolled them into stars. This delete message happens a lot. The particulars don't matter so much. So not only do we see the things that are common, but we also see the things that are very rare. Those other things happen 20,000 times. These happened once, twice, zero, if they have disappeared off the map. And that can be very useful for troubleshooting problems where the first thing that happened that caused a cascading failure might not have been an error, but it might have been a login to a production machine that only is supposed to be deployed to through CICD. The other thing that we also do is we will add some sentiment on top of each of these messages, if appropriate. We are looking for things that everyone knows are bad. Crashes, timeouts, failures, things that happened on every OS, every application, every cloud. And what that allows us to do is instead of having to set granularly every single alert for every single application with magic thresholds that have to be tweaked over time, instead, we can just keep track of what are the bad things that are happening in the environment. From there, we can run a statistical machine learning algorithm to make sense of, is this normal noise of what's going on in the environment or is this an atypical spike? From there, we can create an anomaly. An anomaly looks a little bit like this. Here we're seeing it inside of our web UI, but also we can email this to you or Slack it or any number of other things as well. But we're highlighting here that statistical jump in bad things that have happened so that you can see what are the negative patterns that have emerged from this time frame, what's some of the raw messages in case that's helpful, and then you can dive in from here to the log search scoped to the appropriate time frame so that you can get the context as quickly as possible. Those are some of the things we do on the logging side for observability. On the metrics side, if you happen to be using Kubernetes, we can do a lot of things out of the box for you without you having to configure anything. So we can grab golden signals from all the different workloads. We can pull in the logs from all the different namespaces that you may be using. You could choose to include or exclude different types of ones if you so choose. But there's a lot that goes into making sure that Kubernetes is a very smooth experience. That said, we can collect any number of different types of metrics as well. And of course, not only do we have our pre-configured dashboard here, but you can build your own dashboards inside of Edge Delta as well. Now that's the core observability piece. On the, on the observability pipeline side, I want to show you a little bit about how that's configured to explain why we do that. Many other vendors would do all of the work that you just showed in the cloud, and we do host the UI in the cloud, but as much of the processing as possible occurs on the agent where the data is created. It doesn't bounce to our cloud first, it does the processing there before being sent to whatever destination is appropriate. So for this pipeline, and again, a pipeline here is just a metaphor for the configuration. It doesn't deploy a cluster that you have to maintain separately. It's doing its own thing here. But you can see on the left-hand side are the inputs. In this pipeline, we just have Kubernetes that's feeding all the different pieces, but we could just as easily add in a number of the lowest common denominators for TCP, UDP, HTTP, files, a whole bunch of other different types of things as well. Where everything ends up, is on the outputs on the other side. Edge Delta has three endpoints that uh, matter in terms of collecting information if you choose to send us your data. But if not, we have a number of other places they could go from archive locations like S3 or GCS to other streaming destinations as well if you choose to run your own Elastic cluster or just need to dump things out to TCP somewhere else further down the line. There's a number of different options available to you and they can all be mixed and matched appropriately. 
Finally, in the middle is where all of the work happens. We call these processors, and they can do anything from masking data to make sure that nothing sensitive gets caught inside of any log messages, to filtering data, where we need to drop things that match a certain pattern, could be traced, could be a certain function or a service, to converting messages to metrics, which is especially helpful if you have legacy systems that you no longer can commit code to and you can't re-instrument it for metrics natively. Instead, we can convert the log messages to metrics and send them on to the downstream system appropriately. This is, of course, on top of, as I mentioned, the patterns earlier, which is done on the device. We don't do that on the cloud. We do that where the messages are created. All it takes is making sure that we turn off uh, our edits here that will make sure that everything is deployed. To deploy this pipeline, all we have to do is make sure we save our changes inside of the UI. From there, the Edge Delta agents will check in every minute to see if there are new configurations and then deploy them appropriately in their environments. No needing to redeploy agents except for the occasional agent upgrade, but configs can all be handled here, complete with a UI that shows you the diff of what happened between saves. So that gives us the brief overview of what things look like inside of Edge Delta. I hope that this has given you a little bit of a taste of what we do. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or through LinkedIn, and we will be glad to answer as many of them as we can. Thank you for your time.